As Aloy travels into the Forbidden West, there are many threats she must face. Supercell storms, rebel machine masters, and an ever-growing red blight all must be conquered in order to save the tribal world of the 31st century. Despite all these new dangers, we must keep the ultimate goal in mind to set the world right once more, at the heart of which is restoring the AI Gaia, a process that will finally allow the governing body of Zero Dawn to assume control of the terraforming system, bringing stability to what has been a very chaotic planet in her absence. Regrettably, there is still much to accomplish before Aloy can turn this dream into reality. One such task will be the undoing of the actions of a single man nearly 1,000 years before Aloy's birth, that being the purge of Gaia's subfunction, Apollo. A decision that would undermine the goals and systems of Zero Dawn, robbing the reborn human race of the knowledge and skills of those who had come before. In our previous exploration into Apollo, we began to speculate if the damage done by Pharaoh was indeed irreversible. But today, we will expand on several more scenarios that, if true, Aloy might be able to restore the subfunction to working order. In so doing, restoring Gaia to her true, intended capability. First, let's re-examine what actions Pharaoh took to ensure humanity would never know the truth of the old ones. Despite having over 3,000 failsafe conditions to ensure Apollo's survival, Ted's Omega Clearance over ZD systems allowed him, in his own words, to purge every copy of Apollo's archive. Despite this seemingly irreversible action, Ted would then murder the ZD Alphas after informing them of the purge, a tragic but nonetheless intriguing choice on the part of the world's first trillionaire, an action in my mind to ensure that they could not work to reverse the damage that he had done. As far as Apollo's operational state during Horizon's present era, it would at least appear its systems were not totally undone. Judging by the imagery in Gaia's dying plea, we see Apollo represented along with its fellow subfunctions, still linked to Gaia before the code shackles were severed and the AI's eventual destruction. Seeing this, I'd say it's fair to assume, even though the archive of Apollo was purged, the infrastructure of the subfunction itself remains relatively intact. Meaning, if the Archive was able to be restored, Apollo would most likely be able to function as originally intended, once reunited with the reborn Gaia. So, with that slight glimmer of hope, let's explore how Apollo may be brought back. 1. The Existence of a Physical Archive When Apollo was created, its Alpha Samina Ibaji was faced with several critical obstacles to the subfunction's success one of which was finding a material that would not only be able to hold the massive 42 zettabytes of data of the archive, but a material that could withstand the centuries without fear of degradation. After rigorous testing, Samina found her solution. The data would be encoded into DNA, which would then be encapsulated into synthetic fossils. Each cradle facility would store its own data repository to ensure the knowledge held within would not be at risk of failure in one location. If at least one of these repositories remains intact within a cradle, then bringing it back online with Apollo might be able to restore Lyceum learning facilities across the globe. However, Ted did claim he purged every copy. Though the cradles seem intact, all Ted might have had to have tampered with is one key feature of these sealed reliquaries. According to Samina, these housing facilities had to be kept at negative 18 degrees Celsius to avoid degradation. If Ted was able to tamper with these power systems, raising the temperature, then the encoded DNA may not have lasted into the 31st century. It's unclear at this time if Ted would be able or even know the intricacies of how to accomplish this. But if these fossils are indeed compromised, there are still other avenues that might be pursued. 2. Zero Dawn's copy of the Homer Archive In order to meet the goal ZD had for Apollo, it would need a head start on the some 180 million discrete data entries that would make up the archive. Luckily, Samina had worked on a similar project some decades before. For the original iteration of the Odyssey project, she was a key contributor to the archive for the colony ship, intended to educate a new populace on a planet beyond our solar system. After that iteration was abandoned, the project would later be purchased by the future consortium Far Zenith, and thanks to that partnership, Samina was able to gain access to a copy of that archive known as Homer, to begin what would become Apollo. 
though Ted claimed to have wiped away the seminal work of Samina during the Purge, there is no mention of any action taken towards Zethi's copy of Homer. In fact, this may be the very reason Ted decided to kill the Alphas, as they may have been able to restore Apollo to some degree through Homer. If the copy still remains intact, Eloy and her allies, if located, may be able to use the copy to bring Apollo back online. This, however, is contingent on if the copy has somehow been able to endure the ravages of time. If even somewhat intact, we've seen technology of the old ones be repaired over time, so there is some hope here if the copy still exists. And finally, three. The Alpha Build of Apollo aboard the Odyssey. This perhaps is the most intriguing possibility of all, as the Odyssey itself remains one of the greatest mysteries still left unresolved in the lore of Horizon. Along with the crew, cargo, and zygotes aboard the colony ship was an alpha version of Apollo. Each fighting to complete their objectives before Zero Day, both Zero Dawn and Far Zenith worked in tandem to increase the chances of life continuing either on Earth or beyond. Being that the Odyssey attempted to launch before Zero Dawn had reached functional completion, the alpha version of the Archive was the best available at the time for the colony ship. Though we are told from the data point Odyssey has failed, that telemetry indicated it suffered a catastrophic failure as it attempted to leave the solar system, many believe this is not the entire story. Though on average, I'm more keen to take the lore at face value, imagery we've been given from Forbidden West at least has me entertaining that some facet of the Odyssey will play a major role in the coming story of the world at large. In the reveal trailer for the sequel, we are shown three red objects streaking across the night sky. Though they disappear quickly, enough attention has been given to them to think more should be gleaned from this moment. On the ancient vessel from the first game, with imagery concerning the Odyssey, we see three red ships, each with a red tail soaring across a dark blue sky. With such a definitive parallel between the imagery, it's hard not to think this is a direct sign of things to come concerning the Odyssey ship. Even more peculiar, however, is that the ancient vessel isn't the only sign we've been shown concerning these falling stars. Both on the mural within Devil's Grief and the paintings within All Mother Mountain, we see over the depiction of a Nora village an artistic interpretation of the same or similar phenomena. Three falling stars across the skies above. So what might this all mean? Perhaps this is all just foreshadowing to a great quest for Aloy to find the fallen pieces of a lost colony ship we see in the trailer that the Odyssey actually survived and those who were born from it are about to return to Earth? Or has some aspect of the Odyssey already returned from space long before Aloy's story? Regardless, it would appear that some aspect of the Odyssey will have a role to play in the future, and if that's indeed the case, the Alpha build from the Odyssey may be the key to bringing Apollo back and returning the knowledge long lost from the Old Ones to the tribal world of the 31st century. And that brings our journey to an end. If you'd like to see more content like this, likes and shares are always appreciated, and if you're hungry for more Horizon lore, consider subscribing and checking out some of our other videos. Also consider supporting the channel on Patreon, so we can keep creating content just like this. Check out the link in the description. And as always, thanks for watching, and keep questing.